Hello, my name is Martin, and today I'm going to show you how I made my keyboard PCB hot swappable. Hot swappable, as in you can replace your switches and your LEDs while the keyboard is running without having to desolder anything. That means different layouts, different switches, plates, LEDs. You can just replace them whenever you like, which is really great for testing out new things. All right, so here's what you're going to need. You're going to need a soldering iron. Ironically, not for soldering, but we'll get into that. You need a Cherry MX PCB, of course. And then you need those little tiny hole tight sockets, which I'm going to talk about in a second. If you want to install LEDs, you need a pair of pliers. And then you also need a pair of tweezers for installations, and this is really critical. All right, let's take a look at the sockets. They're made by TE, and they're available in two versions, actually, the lead version and the uh, gold version. I have the lab version because I'm cheap, but that shouldn't stop me, of course. They're available under the, the names I listed here, uh, or the internal names basically for the LEDs, but I'll link those at the bottom so you can just check that out there. Let's look at a schematic for a second. So they're made up by three parts. Uh, the top where the component goes in, the ring which holds it uh, tight in your PCB, and the fingers which take hold of the component, as you can see in this picture. All right, let's see how I installed them on my board. So you take a pair of tweezers, uh, pick the sockets up and put them into the slots for the switches, just one by one. Then you take the soldering iron and you use a circular motion with some force applied to gently push them into the PCB. If you were to go by TE's book, you would install them using a special tool uh, but I don't have that and I don't intend to get it just for that reason. I just use a method explained to me by Geekhack member E3, uh, and that's basically using a soldering iron. There are other people um, I've seen on, on Reddit who press them in just as is. Uh, they didn't explain how to do it. But I think the method with the soldering iron is actually very good and it's very easy. Uh, just make sure you get a wide tip or like a very blunt tip and don't try to do it with a needle tip because that's probably going to hurt your board or the sockets. Just remember circular motions, slight pressure from the top and you should be good. Don't make the mistake and push too hard because otherwise you will see what I did here with my first try. You get lifted pads as you can see at the bottom or broken fingers as you can see at the top. Okay, quick intermediate check here. So as you can see, they don't really sit very flush, but I think that's actually due to the wind keyless PCB, which has really tight holes for the switches. Um, yeah, they still work fine. The switches hold really well. As a side note, if a switch doesn't work, that might not necessarily be due to the socket you installed, but maybe just due to a bent pin on the switch itself. So all you have to do really is just check on the switches and bend it back with your finger and you're good to go. All right, how about the LEDs? So what I did was basically, I took a single LED, put it into the switch and clipped it from the back side to be almost flush with the socket. As you can see, I kept the lengths for plus and minus just to know where the polarity is because the Winkyless PCB has different polarities on some switches like the space bar. All right, so I'll put that in and as you can see, works just fine. So here I assemble the full board and I'll just try to pull one of the keys out with this standard keycap puller and as you can see the switch doesn't really move only the cap moves and it detaches just fine. In conclusion, so I have this board for a month now and I swapped the switches maybe three or four times and I didn't have any problems so far with it. Uh, they still stick fine, uh, they fire the LEDs work fine, and I mean, there is no soldering required at all. Uh, the installation is fairly easy, and you can get them basically almost everywhere through the TE website because they link to vendors who sell them in almost any country. Uh, price point, uh, depending on how many switches you have. So I use the 60% board, that's about 50 bucks for LEDs and for uh, switch sockets. Just because, as I said, for different layouts, uh, you want to have more 
sockets installs than you actually use in, uh, in the final product. Anyhow, so that's about uh, 50 bucks for a 60% board. That means 130 sockets for the switches and 130 for the LEDs. I guess if you have a full size board that will uh, cost you a bit more, I guess maybe 70 bucks, uh, maybe. So yeah, just try them out on your own. I listed all the links that you need at the bottom and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks, bye-bye.